For RCRTV, I'm Sean Kinney, and I'm joined today by Art King, who is the Director of Enterprise Services for Spider Cloud Wireless. And uh, Art's in town for the uh, IB Tough show that Verizon puts on every year in Austin here, and uh, he agreed to come over and chat with us a little bit about what's going on in uh, the small cell world and what's going on with Spider Cloud. We were chatting earlier, and I mean, you guys had an incredible 2015 between your funding and some of your big time deals, and I'm thinking of with Cisco and Vodafone, but just tell us a little bit about how the company evolved last year. Well, the company's made major steps forward in enterprise commercialization, which is really the, 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 the things that we needed to do as a company to hit, um, both hit numbers, but also hit milestones with the types of customers that we're, that we're landing. Now with, with Verizon, what we're seeing is a, a highly demanding customer that, that has a, puts a premium on network quality. They, they just don't need to deliver signal. They, they need to deliver awesome signal. Mm -hmm. So it, it's um, the development work that we've done to become commercial with, 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 with the Verizon organization has been very extensive. Yeah, and, and Verizon, I believe, from Spider Cloud, they purchase your uh, dual mode LTE small cells, is it right? Yes. And they're selling those to some of their enterprise clients, right? Right, right. Yeah, we, we deliver them a band class 4, band class 13 LTE. So it gives them kind of the beachfront outdoor spectrum, the 700 megahertz, and then the AWS spectrum indoors. And that's kind of the uh, the holy grail to these uh, multi carrier small cells. So, uh, what's mm -hmm. the outlook for a four carrier small cell? Well, for, for us, the, the two carriers, we're dealing with a lot of issues of physics. Mm -hmm. so, so, you it's know, a pesky thing. <laughs> yeah. So we both have heat dissipation off mm -hmm. of, our, uh, off of our, our, our radio chassis and also the power over Ethernet Plus that delivers the amount of power that the chips require. So I, I think what we're doing as an engineering organization is working upwards in the supply chain with our technology providers for like the like Broadcom for the system on a chip to figure out how to get things more efficient to put more radios in because mm -hmm. there's quite a demand for more radios but then there's also the physics of you know how do you get it done yeah and you know I um, I know you're a member of the small cell forum and uh, we got to spend some time with Alan Law the the chairman of the small cell forum at their event up in Dallas a few weeks ago he gave us a look at some of their uh, 2016 outlook research mm -hmm. and from my perspective the key takeaway was that this year the small cell market is going to favor enterprise deployments rather than carrier deployments uh, do you agree with that if so can you give us a little context as to why the enterprise market when you look at like Gartner numbers it's about 15 percent of the subscriber base but 30 percent of the revenue mm -hmm. so you have very high ARPU customers and I, I had someone quip to me you know, retention is the new acquisition. Mm. So, so the operator community is struggling with being at 100% market share among the buyers. So acquisition is by finding dissatisfied people and providing a superior product. And, you know, people are moving over. Okay, and, and I got to think that some of that uh, favor of the enterprise growth, it, it's got to just be based on the ease of deployment. I mean, if an enterprise is just trying to cover one corporate campus, that's a lot easier than Sprint trying to deploy 50,000 small cells in every city in America, right? Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and the, the, the thing that, that we've got that's interesting is our DNA is enterprise. Mm -hmm. So our, our whole technology stack is built on top of enterprise technology. If you visualize an enterprise Wi-Fi system, yank out the Wi-Fi radios and plug in cellular radios and add in a boatload of software magic to kind of make it all work. And that's kind of our system. So when you're built on top of that whole Ethernet infrastructure that the, care, that, that the enterprise already has in place in their infrastructure, it allows a very rapid deployment and potentially right on a VLAN provided by the customer. So your construction costs go down because the, the customer is also investing in solving the problem for their business users. Okay. And, um you know, this is I, I, something I mentioned right when we uh, turned the camera on, but I was hoping you could tell our viewers a little bit more about Spider Cloud's partnership with uh, Cisco, where they're reselling some of the equipment to their uh, uh, sales, or I'm sorry, to their clients. Right. So the Cisco USC 8000 platform is a white label of the Spider Cloud platform. And, and then additionally, we have co-developed a module that plugs into the back of the, uh, the 3600 and 3700 series Wi-Fi APs. So it allows a customer to do like almost an infrastructureless installation uh, of cellular inside their building. 
by plugging into the back of say like every other radio. Because when you, when you look at Wi-Fi, like the, you're about 2,500 square feet of coverage per AP, so they're installed very dense. And with LTE, you're around 7,500 square feet. So it allows you to go every other radio, go ahead and plug in it like a, a cellular radio. And then if you want to add a second carrier, you can use a, a different module for, that supports a different carrier also in that same installation and provide your, you know, your at least two carriers. Wow. So, it, so it solves that, that, uh, that uh, multi-operator problem that people right. have always complained about as a, as an issue with small cells. And so I also mentioned in our introduction that you had a very successful December in terms of, uh, of fundraising. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess, uh, and you know, feel free to decline to answer this question, but it seemed like 2015 saw a lot of the companies that just played in small cell go through big acquisitions. So mm -hmm. I was curious what the outlook for Spider Cloud in that regard is. I've, I've even heard talk of an IPO as it relates to Spider Cloud, but uh, you know, we've got you here, so what's, what's the deal? <laughs> Yeah, no I, idea. I don't report into the board of directors, sure. and it's kind of above my pay grade. But you know, I've I've also seen the same things you have around mm -hmm. acquisition, potential IPO. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. At least you know at, at our level in the organization. So we're more growing the company, executing the business plan, and kind of focused on all the the day to day strategic things we need to do. And if the board and magic things happen. Austin? Yeah. Well, in, in the meantime, let's talk a little bit about what brings you to Austin, and that's the uh, IB Tough show. Right. And I know it's just now getting underway, but uh, right. what's Spider Cloud uh, going to be showcasing during the show? We're showcasing the, the dual band product, the band class 4, band class 13 LT infrastructure that, uh, that we've refined with, with, with Verizon. Um, refreshers for the for the installation people that have been through our courses as they begin to take things live, and advanced RF topics for the people who have to think about the macro network and the, and the inside network and how they kind of interact together. So it's kind of a focus on uh, uh, refresh, but also get the macrocellular people to start thinking about how things might affect their overall uh, kind of the RF footprint. Yeah, and you know I. I um like I said, the show is just starting, and so I'm kind of asking you to read the tea leaves a little bit here. But uh, uh -huh. what do you think some of the big topics are going to be addressed this year at IB Tough are? And, and I ask that because I'm genuinely curious because they won't let me in as a member of the media. So I'd, <laughs> I'd love to know what goes on there behind the curtain. Um, quite a lot of education and, and knowledge transfer and a lot of ad hoc questions and things from, from both the system integrator community who's going to be taking our product on behalf of Verizon and installing it, and also the Verizon RF engineers themselves that support all the markets. You know, the, the, the mantra of, I think, every business is do more with less. Mm -hmm. And with the kind of the acquisition cost of, of small sales being quite a bit less than competing technologies, you're in a situation where people are excited about doing more with less, but they need more education to kind of clarify the, the picture for, you know, for them to kind of buy into it and be and have comfort in this is going to solve my problems. Because indoor LTE, the quality issues right now are so important because as Volte launches, um, we want everyone to have an awesome Volte user experience indoors and that, that kind of relies on, you know, five bars of Volte or five bars of LTE everywhere kind of underneath that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I got to think that, that 2016 is going to be a great year for small cell deployments just because of the number of potential customers out there. Joey right. and I travel, I think, about 30 weeks a year to various hotels around the world that have right. no cellular coverage and horrible Wi-Fi, but uh -huh. the solution's out there. I, I just need to get you guys together. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the hotel chains are, are looking at a lot of these things as more turnkey amenities now versus it's it's almost like a mandatory where people check and, and they want the service before they go or they want to make sure that the room they're in is facing a tower somewhere right. if there's no cellular indoors. That's the, one of the more awkward conversations that I regularly have with reservationists over the phone is now can you tell me if I'm facing a cell tower? Excuse me? All right. well, As if. <laughs> yeah. All right, Art. Well, I really appreciate you coming in to spend some time with us and uh, tell us what's going on with Spider Cloud. We'll uh, cool. be sure to keep an eye on you in 2016. Okay. Thanks, John.